If you have your books of Abadar, please turn with me to the Order of Numbers, page 483, Rule of Acquisition, number 9. Opportunity plus instinct equals profit. Hey everyone, John Thomas here from Southern Tom Fullery's Starfinder campaign against the Aeon Throne. I play the character Xenophanes V, the nerdy and soft-spoken android, CFO of the Apollo Protection Agency, and best friend to the hawking lizard man, Titania Mike. When asked what I wanted to talk about with our faithful listeners, I jumped on the opportunity to provide some of the lore of Starfinder. And what better way than to start this than with the Abadar Corp? Starting off, Abadar Corp is without a doubt the most powerful and influential organization in the Pact Worlds. This organization is guided by the tenets of Abadar, one of Paizo's pre-Gap deities whose influence spans both Pathfinder and Starfinder. In the setting of Starfinder, we find it has evolved into a divine conglomerate and has as many regional offices as there are civilized worlds to support them. Their headquarters, called the Golden Vault, is located on the ring of Absalom Station. Inside the Cathedral Bank, congregants worship or attend free financial literacy courses while secular customers negotiate with representatives for loans, product placement in Abadar Corp stores, or the blessing and witnessing of contracts. They own and operate the manufacturing plants that craft the parts and products, handle the logistics and transportation of both magical and technological products, and the sale of said products. They manage the finances and the banks that provide that financing. They were even the ones who established the credit as the common unit of currency in the packed worlds. Of course, being a monopoly, not everyone's happy that they also serve as the packed world's financial regulatory arm and banking facilitator. It's like if Amazon founded and operated the International Monetary Fund, was the highest contributor of that fund, and had the wealth and leverage to become the de facto global financial system for the packed worlds. That's a mouthful. With all that being said, Abadar is a deity who promotes peace, prosperity, education, civilization, and commerce. I mean, that all sounds pretty good to me. What do you think? Anyway, enough out of me. On with the show. Let's get ready for aiding and abreading. I think last episode we left it at kind of a real cheerful spot, right? Not, yeah, you not, might say something like that. It's like a, we, cheerful or cheerful? I said I said cheerful. It was like a birthday yeah. party memory or something like that, right? <gasps> right. Uh, mm. No. Mm. Oh wait, no, no, it wasn't that. Um, well, hey, maybe. Yeah, I know. honestly thought it was going to be the birth of Batman. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, he, a little. How how mad are you at me right now? Like pretty mad? Mostly mad? Kind of mad? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> he's so, think, he's, y'all, he's really mad. Like I think he's at least like 48 out of 55 mad. <laughs> <laughs> Clean Minimal. 48 out of 55. <laughs> Clean 48 out of 55. <laughs> um well, yeah, like I, I really wanted to make sure you hate the Aslantis, so just pretend like they're me, and I think that you'll do just fine. Hey, you are wearing green. I, I actually switched into a green shirt. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Mm-mm. I'm really trying to dig that knife in. Yeah. Um, Ouch. Uh, so Ouch. I, I don't necessarily think a recap of all that's necessary. Um, 
tell us you a little ha- bit about what's going on in the village here. Right. So, well, the first thing you can't really see too much of the village because it's nighttime, and he and like the um the you're coming out like right here, right out of the right. Um, I say right here on the map. You're on the very north side of the uh, colony, and the forest edges right up against to the back of Abreta's junk shop. And you see this kind of tin siding and Jellic kind of waves you through. Shh, all right, let's, uh, let's go see what my ex-wife is up to. Um, <laughs> uh, and he like, he walks out first and he pulls, he very stealthily pulls a little panel open and kind of waves you into the, into the opening. So as, as a uh, fellow is going through, like passing by, uh, Angelic says, so, uh, is your ex-wife? Is that right? Uh, I wouldn't advise bringing it up too much in front of her. Get on in there. Shh, come on. Hey, you've already caused us enough trouble with your talking. Hey, 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 just, okay, fine. I'm going. Uh, so he goes, I assume everybody, goes in after him right yeah yeah um so you see uh this mechanics workshop consists of three interconnected prefabricated modules uh, each of this each the size of a shipping container central module is open on one side and appears to be a repair bay all of the tool chests spools of wire and broken equipment stacked haphazardly around the area imply that the repairs are slow going at best Storage crates, broken furniture, and scrapped engines litter the yard around the junk shop. A short metal fence surrounds the yard, separating the chaos within from the orderly paths and shrubs of surrounding colonist modules. When you come in, you see a... um, kind of an older, tawny-skinned, thick-set woman uh, with long fingers and a piercing gaze. She has wavy brown hair and is pulled back into a messy bun uh, to keep it out of the way. Uh, she looks at Jellic with a bit of a scowl and then sees the rest of you come in. Uh, she is played by Sarah Ramirez. Do y'all know who that is? What is she in? Um, okay, so she was in um, Grey's Anatomy. Yeah, I mean, after the uh, quick, quick Google there, I know exactly who you're talking about. Yeah, so she was in. Um, I mean, her claim to fame is Grey's Anatomy. She's also in Madam Secretary. She was in Spider Man. You've got mail, but you know, her main role was Grey's Anatomy. Anyway, she's she's there. She's who's she's who we got cast for this. And then I actually have a handout for you as well. Okay. Um, it's a good pick for. Thanks. I, I Bretta. A Bretta. A Bretta. Mm-hmm. Um, so when you guys come in, she kind of scrambles. She wasn't expecting guests, and she in her main living area and the living room, as as you might call it. She takes a couple broken data pads off the couch and starts like picking up some dishes and taking it into the kitchen and makes uh, some space for you uh, to sit in her domicile. Yeah, I uh, I go take a much needed sit. Um, Jellic, meanwhile, just through an exchange of glances between him and Abretta she kind of gives him a scowl and then just points into the kitchen and he goes in there to start fixing some refreshments. <laughs> I just I just keep standing. I'm scared to sit on any of the facts. <laughs> <laughs> um she says she says to you uh so uh, who the hell are y'all and why 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 are you running with my ex husband? Well, we sort of ran into him, ma'am, but... Oh, Captain, my Captain. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> we just we're just catching Emily off guard right, just, right tonight. Like, not ready. I should have had some caffeine or something. No, uh, but yeah. So, uh, Abreta, is it? Yes. 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 Um, hello, I am uh, Nariko Ziverajni. Please call me Ziva. Oh my! Isn't that a mouthful? It's a <laughs> yes, pretty name, sir. though. Thank you very much. Uh, I enjoy yours as well. But to cut past the formalities, we are actually here on the uh, request of uh, Sedona. Uh, we- uh, what well, has Jell told you that Sedona has been captured by these fuckers that are out here in my yard? Uh, maybe not. Maybe <laughs> not so loud. I don't, I don't uh, think don't we worry. knew that either. <laughs> um, we did. Oh, did we? Did yeah. We? Yeah. 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 Yes. Just, well, my character is stupid, so it's fine. No. Well, he's he's uh, he's a little distracted at the moment. I was gonna with, say with his feelings, you know. Like I think that's I think that's certainly understandable to to be a little upset. Mm-hmm. Just a, a skinch, a skinch, if you will. I just said no. They they can't hear me. They. I'm. Uh, don't worry about it. Trust me. I wouldn't. I wouldn't put us in danger. I'm just talking a little. Talking a little shit. Gotta get it uh, out. I, come I'm, on, Jellic. Bring them. Bring that tea. I'm thirsty. I'm sure. I'm sure our guests and your soon to be no longer friends, if they get to know you like I do, need something to eat and something to drink. <laughs> All right. So you're here. You're here to bring supplies to us, huh? Well, where are they? I don't see them on your back. I'm just kidding. I know it's probably in the ship. But where's your ship? It's a few miles away. Uh, so you say you're smart. You must be the pilot, huh? Yeah, you might say that. Well, I did say that, but it's cool. Uh, or in Vance. And she extends like kind of a grease-covered hand. Um, as I said, with long fingers. She says, uh, Abrita Folsom. Uh, Abrita, I just need to say this. I very much enjoy you. You are a, a, a woman I close to my heart. I, I'm so glad you... I'm, I'm glad we uh, have encountered you. You uh Well, that's very nice of you to say. Most people around here find me a bit ornery. You are refreshing. Uh, yeah, I, honestly, I kind of like it. Uh, that well, being maybe, said... Uh, maybe Jellic's good for something after all. It seems like he's found some right good people. So but, the situation is pretty dire here. I don't know if you're aware, but we are currently under Aslanti occupation. Yeah, old Jelly there told us about it. Also, we have uh, encountered a few of these Aslanti assholes. Oh, you did? And you're still standing here? Hell, that's that's, that's quite something. And Jellic from the kitchen goes, Yeah, well, I I killed one myself. You didn't do anything, man. Sit down. But no, I I did. All right. (laughs) But I did kill one. He's like muttering, but but before I came on you, I did. He at least got us here. He got us here. So a um, little something more. To scoot back just real quick, uh, like Ziva kind of throws a glance at uh, Ar- Oren when he's uh, when she says the statement about like, "Well, you're still standing," and uh, so she's just like, "Thanks to, thanks to the help of uh, a good crew member." And she just kind of nods, and, like appreciation. He, he just sort of like sh- shakes it off, you know, just real low key. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yes, I mean, so I, I, I'm afraid that you have come during most inopportune time for you, but perhaps an opportune time for myself. Uh, the Islanti don't know it, but a few of us have been co- coordinating a resistance to their occupation. I've been in charge of that. We don't all have all the pieces that we need just yet, but with you on our side, perhaps we do. The first step is to weaken the Aslanti. Those sons of bitches out there. All right. All again, right. again with the yelling and the shouting in the middle uh, of the night. Uh, they said it's fine. All right. Well, I'll join. Uh, well, all right. Easy there. A big big lizard. I don't uh, care. I'll join. 
Big lizard. Hey <laughs> uh, there, big lizard. Hey <laughs> there, big lizard. Uh, a few targeted <laughs> strikes. Well, good. I'm glad to hear that you're with us. Let me tell you that a few you targeted, a few, uh, yeah, a few targeted strikes around town can reduce their numbers, weaken their defenses, or both. In between, you're welcome to hide out here. After that, you've done a little damage. Perhaps a direct attack on the garrison can flush the Aslanti out and free our prisoners. We need our leader back. We need our lead scientist, Sedona, back. Uh, and the rest of us, we could, we'll round up any survivors, disarm them, and take back our settlement. So, big lizards with me. What about the rest of y'all? Uh, we sure aren't going to turn over our arms and surrender to the Aslanti Empire, are we? <laughs> of course not. So, no. so like, I've got a name, right? <laughs> well, well, lay it on me there, big lizard. <laughs> well, you can call me either Titanium Mike or just Mike. It's fine. But like, I'm not wait, big, wait a minute. big lizard. Titanium Mike. Yeah. You're Titan- yeah oh, it's that a bit- makes a whole shitload of sense to me. <laughs> What the fuck are you doing out here? Aren't you punching somebody? Uh, well, I've done that on the way, <laughs> and <Yes>. uh, <laughs> yeah, but I, didn't you didn't you really like lose bad? Last time I saw you had like I'm, a championship. All right, maybe out. maybe you'll just like accept that I join your thing and not like oh, poke all right. salt right in my wounds. <laughs> oh, all right, all right, <laughs> all right. He's a t- he's a touchy lizard, ain't he? All right, my titanium mic. You want to get touched? You want to get no, touched? No, I don't. Z- Zeno kind of interjects, and he's just uh, going to say, Hello, my name is Zeno. <laughs> and uh, thank you again for letting us uh, stay uh, and rec- recuperate here. Uh, we very much appreciate it. Uh, I was wondering uh, if perhaps you could look at this and without <laughs> a, I mean, without a second glance, just kind of just grab the badge off of uh, oh Mike. And Mike spins around and storms off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you tight that. Mother yeah. Uh, uh, um, and she looks, she like, you notice her give kind of like a, she gives a look to you to where she kind of feels <laughs> little regret at pushing you. She doesn't know what's going on in your head, you know. She and she says, as she says, she, uh, as I said, she's kind of ornery and curmudgeonly. But she does. She didn't mean to offend you, so but she doesn't do anything with you just yet. She, she looks at the badge and says, "Oh yeah, this uh, it's like I've seen a couple of them wearing them badges. They kind of light up time to time." Wait, Is there I guess any you got way this that you off can the, modify uh, this? Well, it'll take me quite some time considering that they got all everything locked up. Okay, how long? Well, what do you want <laughs> modified? <laughs> I would like to have this modified to where we could identify where Aslanti are around the premises. If perhaps we could see them before they turn around a corner, perhaps. So you want me to turn this little thing here that kind of senses motion into some sort of hologram projector that tells you where every Islanti is. If I could do that, do you think I'd be in the position that I'm in right now? <laughs> Perhaps <laughs> not so much as a holographic projector. I understand that the tech it does not support it, but I was wondering if perhaps you could uh, attune it to where every Aslanti that comes by blinks a certain color rather than just going off with... She looks at you kind of like, should t- tell you what, I'll, I'll take a look at it. I'll, I'll get it fixed right up for you. I'll have it do just that. I'll make sure that this thing censors anytime somebody comes near us. Give me just some time and I'll I'll fix it up. And she's just like kind of rolling it's, her eyes as she like, says it. It like literally Thank you very much. already lights up. Right, right. Yeah. Already Anyone does. comes near us. <laughs> In other words, a hostile target versus a commoner, you know, versus a village, a colonist. That's what I was trying to. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I and, and I was Lanti detector. That's it. Yeah, yeah. And it's Lanti detector. Exactly. Yeah. Um, no, in all seriousness, no, there's. 
she, you know, that, there's nothing that can do that. I was just wondering. So, so, so look, mechanic skill. If, so. if if you would think about it, though, the best thing you can do with it is for someone to attune it and attune it to the max number of people that are friendlies, so you always know where they are, even if they're out of normal visible range. Sure, that would work if. Uh, if and then, the and party, then, so yeah, and then if you come across enemies maybe be, be be able to attune it to them um anyway anyway she's she, as you guys are kind of having that conversation amongst yourself she kind of steps she says I, before we get into the things that i need you to do please drink eat take some rest uh you guys can uh i guess spend a resolve to recover your well you're going to get a long rest here so um um, so she goes over to Mike and she kind of like gently puts her hand on your shoulder. She says, Mike? Yeah, what you need? Listen, I, I want to apologize for my demeanor. Sometimes I can talk before I think. And listen, I'm just I'm just busting chops. It's, t- it's tense around here and I, I, I apologize. I didn't mean to stir up anything bad. You were the first to to jump on joining this resistance and I see that you're passionate about destroying the Aslanti. Uh, so please, can we start over? My name is Abretta and you are Titanium Mike. Yeah, you got that All right. right. All right, listen, why don't you come down, sit sit with the rest of us and, and take a load off. Don't worry, I have fabricated these seats to endure the massive might that you present what? before me. Well, <laughs> Well, look, if I mean, if we've got the right to stay here for a night, I can take my fucking armor off, right? Yeah, of course. All right, sweet. Well, I probably won't be as much of a danger to your furniture as before <laughs> if I can take that off. I just want to say I'm sorry, but I don't like talking about my past unless it's about my... My boxing career is fine, but that last match was a doozy. She says, yes, I... I understand. We all have things that we don't want to talk about, and she kind of quickly glances towards Jellic, like involuntarily, as she says that. <laughs> oh, that's so sad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, you guys kind of can take a moment to talk to each other. You've arrived. She she can be in your business as much as she want as you want her to be. Um, she she'll. Make scarce if you guys want to talk amongst yourselves, but this is an opportunity to kind of collect your thoughts. I mean, it was a rough day, you know. You started this day coming out of the drift and attacked by two Aslanti drones, and then had to fight your way into Madeline's Landing, in, unable to deliver the goods that you were supposed to deliver. And the person that you were supposed to meet is now captured. Um, so I don't, you know, how are y'all feeling about this? Let's let's do a little check in. All right, so Oren is tired, and he is going to find some corner, you know, couch or chair to, like, curl up in with his eye on the door and his rifle folded over his arms, and he's going to just pass out and just, like, snore a little bit, you know. <laughs> yeah, I could definitely see Oren throughout, snoring. Throughout the, you know, the rest <laughs> of the evening. Fell okay. looks at Oren and, and, and says to everybody, he's like, God, he can fall asleep fucking anywhere. I've never seen somebody be able to do that, but I guess, you know, a year sitting on your ass will do that to you. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Zeno is going to run a level one diagnostic on himself and just sit in the corner, just staring at nothing. (laughs) Captain, you, 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 you arranged this crew. You got anything to say to your your team? Uh, Siva is honestly just kind of taken aback by this whole encounter. Um, this is, was not at all what she was anticipating. Um, but she just kind of looks around at everybody and sees sort of who who they are and, and what they bring to the table. And uh, she's not going to say anything out loud. Um, but uh, through telepathy, she's just going to kind of like send to all of them kind of a, a bit of a mental image of just like peaceful things and just a feeling of warmth and appreciation. 
That's dope. Nice. I like it. Nice. I like it. So, I was kind of so, freaked out about by, everybody. Orin that. sleeps like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his so, snoring stops. One, one real, smile. Real quick that I did want to do is um, go and ask uh, Abrita. The, I'm sorry. Do you have a, um, a blanket or something? Maybe. Well, I got a tart. Never mind. Um, and uh, so Ziva is going to like take off her little like capy doodad that she's been wearing and just kind of drape it over uh, um, Oron. Jellic sees you do that. Um, <laughs> and he actually goes to the bedroom and pulls a blanket out, like his blanket, and gives it to you. Thank you, Jellic. Says, Sometimes it's you just have to take care of Take care of the ladies. And he says that, like, looking at a Breda. You're like, sometimes you just got to be polite and, and take care. And the Breda just kind of smirks a little bit. And then, like, the scowl comes back, you know. So um, so Mike finds where uh, the captain is kind of nestled and comes and slams down in the corner next to her and says, so anyway, uh, I just wanted to speak with you for a minute, if that's all right. Of course, Michael. Of course. It's Mike, but all right. Um, <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> look, so look, I know it's been weird, but like, are we, are we doing all right? Are you doing all right? I just, I don't know. I'm not doing all right. So I just, <laughs> I just want, I just want to talk to somebody, right? Fell's sitting there. I'm, I'm assuming I'm still in earshot because we're right next to each other, right? We're in the same room. Oh, shit. I didn't see you there, Slender Man. Hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, I, I'm not I'm not doing my thing I tried to do earlier, but I forgot about the second skin. But, uh, you know. Yes, I was um, sorry. I was wondering what exactly you were doing in the middle of the jungle. But uh, to each his so- own, I suppose. So look what I was doing and he just kind of sits and like puts his hand on the oh, chair that he's sitting on. Oh, here's his, the jacket, by the way. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, but he puts his hand on the chair and you see his skin change to mimic the pattern of the chair on his oh, hand. That's that cool. is very handy. Yeah, I so, suppose. so I need, I need to find like, I don't know, a, a force field or something that, that, you know, you can see through. So that so that I can I mean I can do that I can hide if I need to, but yeah I ain't got that right now so, but uh, anyways Mike go ahead continue sorry I didn't I, I mean, yeah, I, that, I mean was, I, that was that I was really like really good uh, good thing to interrupt with there you know? <laughs> yeah so <laughs> like, per- perfect hey, interjection fell look at this. So like, so like, I'm emotionally vulnerable, and your response is, "I'm a chameleon," <laughs> right? Look, I'm not good at these things. Okay, like, I'll listen if you want to talk. I tell you, what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just shut up. I'm gonna just shut up, and and you can do that again. I'm, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just be here. So <laughs> I le- legitimately didn't know you were. In. He's already doing his camouflage. He does not uh, even have to be naked. Anyways, I'll see you guys tomorrow, right? <laughs> no, let, uh, come, come. And she's, she's just going to kind of get up and kind of walk over to the corner and, or like away from everybody and be like, come, Michael, let it, let's, let's talk for a moment, please. Fell kind of awkwardly leaves. <laughs> and she was to, wants to go check out her shop. Um, but yes, I, no, I, I do not, uh, I cannot uh, do battle as well as you, but uh, they can always listen and I'm always glad to do so. So please uh, feel free to talk. Look, so I just, you know, I think of you as, as the captain. I want, for one, for you to think as you as the captain, right? Mm-hmm. Be, the, be the captain. Do that job. All right? We all got jobs. That's your job. <laughs> all right? Indeed, you know? yes, in this. I'm sorry, I know that's coming out strong, but I, I think got interrupted I, by a chameleon. I don't know that you could come off any other way, Mikhail. <laughs> Mikhail. Yeah. Uh, but no, I mean, that's just my advice. I want you to be there and be uh, in charge like you're supposed to be. Now, that said, I'm kind of in a weird way. Uh, I don't know, I've been thinking about 
this is Lanti stuff. And uh they're just the worst. <laughs> they 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 killed me mom. Did you know that? They killed me mom. I'm sorry, I I didn't know that you uh you, you mentioned before that your your home planet was taken by them. Uh, that is bad enough, but to have mother lost from it, I I am very sorry, Miguel. And she just kind of puts her hand on your, well, probably forearm because she can't reach your shoulder. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, yeah, she just tries to like pour as much like, um, yeah. like ten- tender appreciation into that touch. Like, well, yeah, you, I mean, you seem a tender soul, you know, right? So like, I don't know how to talk to people in any way, shape or form, but I needed to real bad. And I just, I don't, and he's like, so he doesn't know how to do this. He has like, no idea, know how to do this. But, uh, you know, he just came to you and you showed him some, some kindness. You know, he's like, and I, I imagine Mike hasn't really thought about that in quite some time until 20, 20 25 years, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> yeah, it's been a minute. Uh, but yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm just in a bad way. I've been thinking a lot and, and I don't know why it brought up that I think you need to like, you need to be a captain, you know, you need to do that. I mean, when you intimidated me like you did, I just want to say you really did. I I said, Oh, thank God when I made that (laughs) shot. Right. Oh, really? I did too. That's wonderful. Okay, we'll to see you on the same yeah, side. Yeah, so just do that. Just be that. I'd like to be this person you want me to be. I uh, I will follow your example. I can't be tough by myself. And he's just like, kind of like, ooh, like shrugs off a of tear and says, all right, we'll see you. <laughs> and he goes and like cut up, you know, nestles in a corner feeling like shit. Okay. So it's the next morning, and Abretta <laughs> kind of wakes you all up with like just clank. She's like clanging in the shop. Clank, 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 clank. Enough, enough. And, and uh, Jellic comes in, kind of shaking, says, "Oh, I'm sorry. It's just this is how it is at, the, at, at her junk shop. You're going to wake up at six thirty in the morning every day. <clears throat> uh, but I did make some breakfast for you." Ziva is already awake, by the way. Nice. And uh, he's got some scrambled eggs and some fruit that he's like, I mean, the scrambled eggs look awesome, even though they're like powdered eggs. Um, But the fruit, like he like went through all this effort to like make like a fruit tray, you know, Mm -hmm. (laughs) he says, uh, Oh, he's trying. Yeah. (laughs) I really recommend that you, that you eat before a Brita is finished with her morning work, because once she starts to set you to task, she's going to expect you to go pretty quickly, I think. And then at that moment, the clanging stops and he kind of like shuffles back into the kitchen and starts cleaning up as she walks in. She says, Oh, well, I see y'all are all early risers like myself. <laughs> yeah. yeah so, you might so, say that. so I yeah, just no. wanted to go ahead and volunteer for one of the tasks you're going to throw at us. Oh, well, I mean, I, I thought that we had already established that. Uh, I think most of these tasks are going to take you working as a team to do it. I, I, slip, sure. I slip off into the kitchen and start eating before she can assign me anything <laughs> I, to do. I, I was like legit just trying to give you guys more time. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, uh, water. Right, right. So you like go in, uh, kind of sneak in and start scarfing down or whatever. And she's, she's talking loud enough that you can still hear her. Um, in the kitchen. So she's going to go through a few different missions. Um, let me get through them. Just make like vague notes about them and we'll give you more details, but they're, they're, you have kind of some options here. So the first thing she says is, well, <sighs> we, Jellet told me last night that you guys ran into some, that y'all ran into some Hobgars. Yes. Well, they are, they constantly, plague our colony they you see they are attracted to technology they're they're attracted to the electricity but we have a few contained in a in a trap at the top of a tall pole in the center of town and i think if you can open these we've since put up some like barriers around 
So they don't come in here anymore. But we got these four that we just kind of keep. And I think if you let them out, you'd cause a, a bit of a disruption. Um, you might might mess up some of the uh, technologies of the Aslanti. As we know how to deal with them, I'm not sure that the Aslanti have quite figured it out. So there's that. Also, there's a group of cadets that patrol the settlement, and they're bullying colonists real bad. I think you ought to eliminate this patrol. It'd do a lot for the morale of this uh, colony, and will also dwindle their numbers, which is what we need to do before we make an attack on their garrison. There is a route. Their their patrol route takes them near our small cemetery. Uh, which would provide a great ambush spot for you to to jump on them while being far enough away from the rest of the colony to not raise any alarms. So I suggest you could cut through the forest and go around to the back and hide out there and wait for them and set up on them. But make sure if you do that you kill them quick and kill them fast and make sure they're dead. Double tap them if you got to. Uh, cause we don't want them raising the, sus- the alarms or the suspicions that you're here. We also have a moisture collector collector. As you can tell, we're perpetually living in fog, so we don't get much rain and there's not a lot of natural water around here, but we do use, we draw the water out of the fog. Um, the Islanti are, are rationing water to, to keep us in line. It's not their water. Anyway, uh, the, I think that if you could liberate that moisture collector from the Aslanti control, again, that would help. Finally, our leader, Madeline, he is a Lushinta. Uh, he is a priest of Abadar, and he set up a little temple. I don't know if you also know Abadar Court kind of funding this whole shindig right here. Yeah, I'm all too familiar. Yeah, you know, I had my reservations too, but they seem to keep us pretty well supplied. Um, And anyways, well, Madeline, he got captured. Got captured by the Islanti. And uh, he has some information about what Sedona found out in that old wreck, that shipwreck site. But he was captured before he could tell us, and I thought, I damn think that that might be something useful for us. So he might have something in his house. Now you can go through there and check it out. And I even have the passcode to his personal entrance. Um, See if you can find something there. I haven't had a chance to go look and I think that they might, uh, they might, they know me. They've been, they've been asking me to make repair all their weapons and stuff. So I'm kind of busy. I got to stay here and look busy, but perhaps you can go there. In any case, if you take take out one of these uh, missions, perhaps we could make some progress in this resistance that we got going on. I think uh, that any of these would be very good for, as you say, causing uh, causing a bit of a disturbance or uh, and uh, increasing our information. Um, personally, I th- I think we should go the um, the least invasive option first there's four options there's releasing the hobgars there's the ambush at the cemetery there's freeing the moisture collector collector and going to madeline's house so this uh meanwhile they're kind of she's charting out she's like roughly drawing out a map of the colony and she points to you to where each of these things are she points on the map and she says here uh is where the Hobgars are, and that's F on the map, which is kind of right in the center of town. Then there is the cemetery, which is G, which is on the northeast part of the colony. And then the moisture collector is at H right here, which is kind of in between a lot of the uh, domicile modules. Madeline's house is this L-shaped one here, which there's his living quarters and then like a the temple is connected to it. So where where uh, are we? You are in D at the very north. Okay, part. cool. Very so, nice. So uh, as to your point, Captain, the, doing a least intrusive one, what you think is the right one for that? 
Personally, I think uh, going into Madeline's house may be the the least, the least intrusive or the least uh, to let our uh, captors, as you were, know that we are here. I think if we start killing their cadets first thing, they will become a little bit suspicious. If the moisture capture goes down, they will be suspicious. But we won't necessarily be taking or doing anything uh, obtuse in Madeline's house. You, yes? Does this track? I mean, yeah, it makes sense to me. He's like the most important person in town. It, yep, yep, makes sense. Visiting Madeline's house could uh, de- definitely requires uh, some stealth. Stealth, yeah. Yes, and it would be in our interest to get more information before we proceed but, to any other objectives, as they would be secondary to require. I mean, uh, gathering more information. The they as you're talking, uh, Abreta kind of tells you that you know you could use the forest to your advantage. You know, you could dip back out the back, go around. Mm-hmm. You know, the forest, you know, and come into the back of this, you know, as I said, this yeah. is Madeline's Yeah, definitely. House. That would be the best course of Absolutely. action. Because we can't march Titanium Mike down the street. No. Yeah, which is why I was quite sarcastic about this. <laughs> well, all the options are going to have that problem, right? I mean, if you guys- oh, also, you guys took, a, I'm sorry, you took a long rest, so you get all your, you don't get any HP back. Well, you do. Sorry, let's do this one step at a time. Get any resolve. I don't think you guys use any resolve. You get all your stamina back. I'm- so you get your stamina back, and then you get um, HP back. I think it's like equal to your level plus. You get yeah, you get one HP per character level. Oh wow! So one. If uh, if you were hit into your HP, yeah. I think. I was the only one that did that, yes. So you're still missing some HP, right? Yes, I'm still missing two HP. Okay. Um, so in the morning as we're gathering things up, Orin's going to go up to Zeva and say, Hey, uh, you doing okay? Took a pretty bad hit yesterday. I have had better, but uh, I am I'm okay. I'm still a little, um, a little sore, as it were. Hmm. Let me take a look. And I am going to use my class feature, uh, okay. which is called Mystic Cure. And uh, I can do it once per day. Or it's called Healing Touch. Excuse sorry, me. Mystic, he- yeah. mystic Cure is my spell. Healing Touch is what it's called. Uh, so I can spend 10 minutes to magically nice. heal an ally up to five hit points per mystic level. Nice. So uh, Oren will uh, just sort of like... <laughs> with with his star magic, um, patch up the remainder of her wounds. So and, like, and, good. And I'll just be like, "Be careful out there, okay?" That's only HP, though. That's not stamina. I we get, get all their stamina, stamina yeah, back. Yeah, all our stamina. Oh, she gets okay. Okay, yeah. everybody gets all their stamina back. Thank you very much. I feel. A thousand times better. And yes, I will be much more cautious going forward. I always keep an eye out for those blue little monkey bastards, yes? And she kind of winks. Yeah, that and more. And uh, so he, uh, wherever we're heading off to, we'll go regroup. All right. Okay. So the decision was to go to uh, Madeline's, Madeline's house. Yeah. Is, is that... Yeah, you're, you you're the captain. You're the captain. <laughs> it's, I'm a captain, but I like a little bit of... Uh, you know, a second this, opinion. The second opinion, yes, this is. Mm-hmm. I mean, I already said, how do you say this second opinion? <laughs> so information uh, is paramount. Okay. So you guys kind of work your way through the forest, staying hidden. Again, the fog actually is very helpful in this situation. Even in open space, you can't see more than 30 feet in front of you. So you're, you're using that fog to your advantage. And you come around to the back to where they indicated that Madeline's house would be. And his private residence consists of two connected prefabricated modules rather than just one, although there is a separate entrance to each module. 
One of the entrances is painted with an elaborate cityscape in gold above the words, All are welcome before the master of the first vault. Each entrance has a keypad next to the door. The building is well maintained, but its lights are out and carries a general air of abandonment. Hmm. So, yeah, so we're going to... We, uh... We, uh, we've got the keypad to his personal residence. It's obviously going to be this plain-looking one. I had doubt the, the ornate one is the, you know. I would uh, imagine that religion, is for the Roll a religion check. I th- there maybe? is no religion check. There's mysticism uh, and there's culture. It'd be mysticism. I'm, or culture. I'm guessing. I'm guessing. Sorry. Which one? <laughs> Um, I think it's gonna be probably culture. culture. Yeah, culture. Say it's culture. Say it's culture. Twenty-four. Yeah. Twenty-four. Yeah. Okay. Um. So you recognize that that's like a normal greeting that's on almost every temple to Abadar. So you can see that that's the temple side of the module, and then his private residence is probably the one that's... Oh, safe. well, yeah, I would definitely know a, yeah. a temple to Abadar, for sure. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, so yeah, we're going in this way. What was that key code again? Well, actually, I was wondering, and she kind of, like, eyes failed, like, do you think maybe you could put your uh, camouflage nature into uh, effect here? I mean, yeah, if I'd thought about it before, if I, you know, we I wasn't wearing this armor, sure. But right now, as it is, I mean, it covers most of me. So I tell you what, I can change my face and my hands. <laughs> that is Everybody less than quick, helpful. Everybody, quick! What are the rules for donning and doffing armor? We got to yeah, find yeah. out. Uh, it takes time. It takes a minute, time, but I'm like not doing five it. minutes or something. Yeah, I think it's ten. Yeah. Um, Could we not retcon that? I feel like that's something that we would have said before we left. Like he made this big thing about that. Well, that's up to him if he wants to be armorless or not. Uh, fair. Yeah, not really with, with okay. all these bad guys around. Like, it was an idea yeah. that I had, but I probably That's... not. Then, then he forgot how physics works. And... <laughs> <laughs> what even are magnets? Um, okay, so. <laughs> all right. Uh, so who's uh, our stealthiest stealther? Me naked. <laughs> I have a four. All right, seven. I've got a seven. I've got a three. Oh. Yeah, or is it me? For sure. Yeah, yes. I think it's you. So it's always me. I got, I got like a negative one, right? <laughs> <laughs> Michael, you stay with me. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna go up to the door. Uh, I need the the keypad. Who can, who took the code? Oh, we said you got sure. you got the code, yeah. right? Before, okay. but, before that, okay. can we look around? Can we do like a perception? Well, I was just gonna or... ask him. To, I was gonna ask him to make a perception. Mm-hmm. All right, I can do that. Yeah. I have a ten perception. Get some. Okay, so 19. I mean, I, I'm gonna let you take 20 on the stealth because there's nobody around. You know okay. what I mean? Like, and so you you go up and you look at it and you see that the keypad is like a screen, right? Like a okay, like a touchpad, but there's it's completely black. There's it's like no light up on it. There's no UI on it at all. <sighs> Not my area of expertise. Can one of you techies come here and take a look at this thing? Yeah, let me take a look at it. Uh, okay. Let me get a uh, an engineering check, please. All right. Get that plus 12 on it for a 27. Right, yeah. 27. All right. So you you can, you take a look at it, and you're, like, looking around behind. You see that the main power line has been cut to the building. So the building's not getting any power, and therefore the... Um, the keypad isn't functioning. And so you can either force the door open or you could try to flip on the auxiliary p- power. Uh, I'm down for that. Would we know would turning on the auxiliary, whatever, turn the whole place back on? So it's going to, the auxiliary power is going to turn on what, what fell would know is that it's going to just turn on the, the basic functions of the domicile. So it's not like all the floodlights are going to come on or anything <laughs> like that, but it's going to give like basic power, you know, it's kind of like a backup. Systems, G- yeah, right. And mm-hmm. the doors so you don't get locked in, shit like that. Right. So, uh, yeah, Fell's absolutely going to try and do that. Okay. Good uh, so roll, roll an engineering check to okay. see if you can get it. 
charged up. Come on, baby. Oh, 28. Yeah. 28 is going to get it for sure. So you just like, hey, it's a busted wire. And you, you kind of just like splice it a little bit and, you know, bypass the main power into the auxiliary and and the, uh, the light comes on on the keypad and Oren just do, 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 opens it. The door opens. All right. So rifle right, so out. I creep in. Okay, so the interior of the residence is in complete disarray and has plainly and very visibly been thoroughly searched. I mean, you can tell this just from, like, looking in before you even step in. Um, that's basically all you can see from, from here. I think we should all get inside. Yeah, agreed. And close as, the door behind us. As we're moving forward, Ziva's going to use uh, telepathy to say... Uh, if for some reason we must uh, use uh, action, uh, let us try and be quiet about it. No gunshots, if at all possible. Um, okay. I growl and in first? holster my gun. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going in first? I'll go I mean, in first. Yeah, Oren's already there. Captain Orin, perception. Roll, a percep- roll, yeah, roll a perception, please. Oh, come on, Perception. Oh, oh no! Oh, no. Oh. So Oren steps in, and you feel the floor kind of give a little bit when you step in, and it like sinks I a little ju- bit. I jump back. Oh, then you you don't know what you do right now. You triggered this <laughs> motherfucker, man. <laughs> um, okay, so look out, Adam's triggered. <laughs> I'm gonna need you to roll a reflex save. Okay. Okay, so you 17. make the save. You're going to still take some damage. Okay. From uh, what? Uh, let's see here. <laughs> so you step on it and like... <laughs> I take like half all, of that? Is that what happens? Yeah, you take half of that. So you step on it and... <laughs> like concussive like... Like sound. Wave, like force wave. Just, <laughs> just like erupts from you feel it from your ankles through your knees as your bones are just rocked all the way up to your pelvis as you take Ugh. seven uh sonic damage oh, um, and then you start to hear an alarm go off <laughs> fuck 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 oh, oh fuck. my Bell. ears are ringing Bell. cheese it roll it roll an engineering to see if you can cut this alarm off all right yeah, this was definitely the Loki place to go, right? <laughs> <laughs> and here I wish we were playing 5e. I could use an advantage. <laughs> Let's see what we get. Oh, 20! Okay. Fucking hell. Right. All right, so, like, you kind of see this happening all at the same time, and you pull, like, you pull the ox power. I mean, like, as soon as the blast, it's not, a, not in enough time to, like, completely subdue the effects of the trap but like just as it starts going off you're like it's like and you just pull it real quick um and you're kind of just looking around hoping that nobody heard that first little sound um but yeah there's as as you kind of step off and shake your head you see that there's like a five foot square you know square little pressure plate that has the signature like aslanti green trim (sighs) under it Gee. I really, really hate these people. Hey, Oren, you all right, what? buddy? What was that? <laughs> and and Fell puts his his finger over his mouth and is just like he knows he can't hear him. But he's like, shh, I can't hear you. You hear Ziva's voice in your head. Please be quiet. <laughs> just don't speak. You're very loud. So, how much sound did that concussion actually make? The door was, was closed behind us. No, it wasn't. Was he it? stepped in first. Yeah. Nobody else got in. He stepped in first. I mean, it it was it wasn't quiet, but mm-hmm. it's not like it. I mean, you don't know really. Like, I mean, it's la- it was loud to you, you yeah. know, but it wasn't loud enough to do damage to you, right? But loud enough that we'd be like, oh fuck. Yeah, you might. It definitely kind of puts you on edge a little bit. But you did cut the alarm, you know, and after about thirty seconds, you don't hear anything. You know, just kind of like listening and you don't hear anything approaching, but definitely rattled you a little bit. The DM reserves the right (laughs) to bring in enemies as he sees fit. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, 
yeah, I'm just gonna like lean an arm up against the wall and just like sort of like hold my head, like I have a splitting headache all of a sudden. Oh God! Oh. So uh, I think we ought to look see if there are any more of those traps. Yes. Um. Agreed. All right. So roll roll perception check. Everybody can go in, or I guess <laughs> I guess, uh, or you roll one since you're already in, and you're not on a trap right now. Thirteen. Okay. That's you, you. You get the sense that there are no more traps, but you can't really focus on anything else. Somebody else is going to have to come in and like actually search the the room. But you, you're you're like so narrowly focused on the floor, just like looking all over <laughs> the more pads, and you don't you don't see one. Um, Fell well. Fell's like right behind him, I guess. Yeah. Well, Fell's at the door panel right okay. now. Okay. Well, Ziva's going to come up behind you and kind of start scooting in. Okay. So do we both make perception or just... Yeah, yeah. Everybody can scoot in, make perception. Jesus Christ. Good Lord. Holy crap. All right, Ziva. Six, you, uh, 23. <laughs> you, uh, Ziva with a 23. Um, you just see a bunch of papers everywhere, but you find a report that kind of stands out to you. Um, and it, it's a report that indicates that several miners were injured in an accident uh, in the Blue Tin Range, uh, but they're expected to make a full recovery. You also see a door that connects into the Temple of Abadar. Okay, um, but the, we don't notice any other traps or anything like that? No. Okay. Um, I'm going to just take that report. Okay. Okay. Just kind of file it away. Yeah. Uh, and just kind of like usher everybody in and let's go ahead and close the door. Uh, Can I work. rest for 10 minutes? Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's, that's kind of. <laughs> I have one stamina point. Do you want to take yeah. that risk? No, no, no. I mean, you did make I a mean, sound. That's all I'm saying. It's very true, but I only have one stamina point. I know. It's. it's it's a real doozy of a predicament. Uh, you, you just want to chill out, right, mate? I just need a minute. You need ten of them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know. Um, I know. I, I don't like it. I mean, I can. if no one else needs to rest, I can rest and they can watch. Right? Yeah. True. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we just post up then. Cause... So, yeah, I cut the, uh, close the door, cut the auxiliary power, mm-hmm. and our Everybody... power already off. But so, spending a resolve point to regain hit points. How does that work exactly? Res- uh, resolve? No, you can't heal hit points. I mean, get... stamina, stamina. Oh, points. stamina. So you yeah. can use one resolve point to get all your stamina back. Oh, okay. I definitely want to do that. That's what I want to attempt to do. I mean, you there's no attempt. You can just do no. it. Okay. Or there's no roll, I should say. You know, there's. He meant the um, attempt with the short rest. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. so we we have ten minutes where we don't know what's going to go on. I mean, Mike's going to be like right in front of the door we came through. Like, yeah, if we... someone comes through that door, they're faced with Titanium Mike. I think we're all going to, you know, take defensive positions and let him kind of like sit down and collect himself. Okay. Um, what about, there's some, what, would one of y'all want to check out the temple while he's resting? Nope. So, yeah, you definitely should. Someone definitely should. I, uh, yep. Someone definitely needs to. I'm being, I'm being a bodyguard. Okay. That's what I'm doing. I'll, I'll do it. All right. All right. I'll go with the two Zeeves. Can right. team up. The Z Squad. Z Squad. Z Squad. So Z Squad. <laughs> That's a different right. game. I really want to perceive the fuck out of everything as we're going along. Like, all right, so let's, let's get a perception on the <laughs> on the <laughs> door. Perceive the shit out of. So let's it. get a perception on the door that connects. Okay. Uh, oh my god! Oh no. An eight. Yeah, you can roll. We got a, a, a nineteen. Uh, that's a better than a eight. 
I yeah, had so a natural it, one, so yeah. So <laughs> it's an unlocked door, and it has a picture of a golden key on it. Uh, and it does not, you don't see any wires leading to it or anything like that. It does not appear trapped. Okay. But would either of us know, like, is, does that key mean anything special? Like the, the image? Yeah, your, your boy is like, uh, Orin's like, yeah, this is all. This is, uh, yeah, this is Abaddon. The standard simple. stuff. Yeah. Okay. Um, so then you can step in, uh, and then I would like you guys, you, you, you step in and you see like sev- several simple benches and an altar bearing Abadar's holy symbol of a golden key. Um, the chapel has also been searched, but it doesn't look like it, it was as thoroughly ransacked as Madeline's living quarters. Um, both y'all roll a perception. 13. Jesus. Uh, yeah, okay. Nine's not going to get it. So you can, uh, Zeno, you can at least determine that there are no traps in here. But you might want to call for some help to dig in. Yeah, Ziva just kind of keeps looking back over her shoulder. She's okay. she's distracted. All right. I, I suggest to uh, Ziva, I suppose that you could use your mind abilities to call for more assistance that's very, very good. And she's just going to kind of reach out and be like, Fel, could you, uh, could you join us, perhaps? And, Doesn't uh, he have a good perception? It's uh, plus five. Yeah, come on. Yeah, <laughs> right. And Mike, take, take, take care of Orny. I'm, I, I got to go so, join them. So to be clear, it's just me in the doorway. No, you've got... Him. Yes. Yes. It's just, just me protecting well, there, him. There is just I mean, one fine. doorway, correct? I'm, I mean, I'm a professional bodyguard. Yeah, we're not yeah. far. Right. We're not far away. Hey, how, yeah, yeah. how far would you say, Adam? Like, what's the span of this room? Like, uh, Well, see, so, like, you guys went in this door yeah. here, and you're connecting here. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so you're at the the entrance to Madeline's private quarters is at one end, and you go all the way back the shotgun, and it connects in an L to the temple. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, it's wherever you guys want to be, really. No, how you long? No, no. How long is, is Madeline's private quarters? Oh, sorry. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah, they're like I think they're. I don't want to tell you wrong, but you know, the size of a single. 40 feet, something like that. Like it. trailer house, you know, like... Yeah. <laughs> like one whole yeah. trailer. <laughs> yeah. How, a, however long, you know, a regular trailer, shipping crate is, you know. Trailer long. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, within, within like, they one, come in 20 one round. Feet. They come in 20 feet and 40 feet. So, it's well, a... 40 feet. Say yeah. 40 feet. Yeah. 40 Look feet. Me, low and stuff. <laughs> um, Look at Google. Low and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um... Well, okay, so actually Ziva's going to come back out as Fel's going in and just kind of come midway down just to kind of keep a, an eye on Mike okay. in that situation. So, yeah. Okay. So, Fel, you go in? <laughs> yep. Okay. You get that perception. Hey. Right. Ten. Yeah. Uh, you might, might have to come back another day, team, unless... uh. I mean, when we finish the 10 minutes, I can check it out. All right. So you guys are just looking through and you're, you're sitting there and you're just like, oh, man, just like trying to get yourself together. Like the, the ring starts to finally fade. Yeah. You know? Brutal. And you're like, oh, gosh. Okay. So, but you, you feel re-energized and you see all your companions just kind of bumbling around in the temple, like completely. <laughs> I'm not. Well, yeah, like you know, the, the, they're just the like holding up a, a book. Like, what is this? They're yeah, like, Orin... look, they're looking at pews. Like, what? What are these? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what analog contraption? I've, I've, li- I've literally Isn't got a thing? cannon to the door of the entrance. Just yeah, you're waiting. just holding it there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> Zena just got her knife out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll I'll go take a look. And I'm loath to step into a. Um, a chapel of Abadar, but okay. I go in. Oh my Thirteen, God. come on! Yeah. All right, I'm gonna oh give boy. you. Who has the best perception? Y'all are gonna get one more check. That's, That's me. Two. I have a plus ten to perception. All right, yeah. Roll one more time. Come on, twenty-one. There we go. That yes. will 
do it. So you're just like really God. looking. You're like the first time the with that thirteen, you're looking and you're like, oh man, I like really just not comfortable in here. But you shake it off and you really look. And behind the altar, you see a little hidden niche uh, behind the golden key. And inside, you see a data pad. Um, so for yeah, now, hand it off. Yeah, okay. So you hold you hold it off, or you hand it off. Um, it's a tier two. You, who do you hand it off to? I'm assuming to the Techno. Zeno, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Zeno, straight up, you know, you recognize this is a tier two data pad. It's worth about 300 credits. Um, if you would like to, what would you? What do you want to do with it? I. I'd love, first, I'd like to see if it's uh, uh, unlocked. If it's, uh, it is not unlocked. So you open it, and it comes up with like, you know, a uh, typical security okay. start screen. All right. Well, do you, do not. Do you think we can take it? With uh, it says, "It says, welcome, Madeline. Please enter password." Hmm. Choir hacking check. Right, Hacker man. No. Hacker let me, man. No. <laughs> let me get a computer. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Sure. Little computers check. So the base DC to hack a computer is equal to wow. 13 plus four got, per tier. The main yeah. uh, so with that 26, it was a DC 21 check. Mm. Oh, sweet. You open it up and you see that it was like last on a video transmission. Um, and it was. It's like a recording of Madeline talking to Sedona. And just as you're about to hit play on that, <laughs> the door kicks in. Three Eslanti guards are there. And we'll see you. No. Oh, oh, my. Into the chapel? Uh, no, I didn't no, even no, think we, about that door. No, not the chapel. The other one. The, other. the mic's on? Yeah. Wait, wait. He kicked my door?